Welcome to part four of the Metal Building Manufacturers Association series on fire resistance design for metal building systems. This uh, part of the series is on fire resistance rated walls. My name is Nestor Ivankiu. I'm senior engineer with Jensen Hughes and for the last 10 years have also served as the fire protection code consultant for MBMA. A brief reminder that uh, the users are cautioned to always use the building code of record and the uh, specified uh, standards, building code requirements. Uh, while this uh, information presented has been uh, uh, reviewed for accuracy and completeness, it is based on uh, uh, the 2009 IBC and with some updates to the 2015 IBC, if that is not the building code of record or the requirements, uh, the actual uh, code of record is what governs. Uh, it is also assumed that the design is done by a competent design professional uh, who is responsible for that design and that the final decision on uh, approval or disapproval of, uh, of a submittal is the local authority having jurisdiction. Part four is uh, strictly focused on fire resistance rated uh, wall assemblies, in particular those that were uh, sponsored and developed by MBMA. Uh, the final part of this series, part five, will be on fire resistance rated joint assemblies. The previous one, uh, if you need to, if you're looking for columns and roof ceiling assemblies, that information was covered in the preceding part three of this series. Fire resistance rated walls. The International Building Code has several different definitions and specific terminology, if you will, uh, for uh, fire resistance rated walls. We'll see that. Um, uh, on the next slide, and also in terms of fire resistance ratings, um, several other things to be uh, leery of in terms of what the assembly is qualified for and, and what it is not. The first thing is uh, the assemblies may be load-bearing or non-load-bearing. Load-bearing, as the name implies, is a structural wall. It can transmit design loads. Uh, the non-load bearing is strictly an architectural non-load bearing wall. So again, be careful. Uh, uh, don't use a, uh, a non-load bearing wall for a structural application because that uh, uh, that could be trouble. Uh, exterior walls. Uh, the importance here is that uh, exterior walls may be rated for either the interior side the exterior side exposure or from both sides. Um, it is important to note that because, uh, again, one could have trouble if uh, uh, a wall, an exterior wall is rated from the interior only and one is attempting to use it uh, for a property separation exterior wall where the rating is needed from the outside. So again, make sure that that is consistent with the needs. The other uh, sort of sidebar on this is with regards to joints, um, uh, perimeter relief joints and control joints. Uh, there are special requirements for those uh, for uh, fire resistance and those are given in, uh, in the UL directory uh, in the general information section, the uh, uh, metal building manufacturers fire resistance guide and also the, the gypsum association uh, specifies those, so be careful that those are included in your uh, installation construction specification for fire resistance rated walls with gypsum board. Some more on uh, the IBC terminology um, on fire resistance rated walls. One type is what's called a fire rated partition, and again the partition is the um, is the IBC terminology, and this is a fire resistance rated wall, but the, the difference is that it's the least restrictive 
uh, relative to IBC code requirements, relative to continuity and protection of openings in the wall. In terms, specifically in terms of continuity, a partition may stop at a ceiling. Uh, it doesn't have to go slab uh, to slab to deck above. A fire barrier does. Uh, so it's sort of, it's the next higher level of, uh, of requirements. It must be continuous from the floor slab below to the deck above. So it has to go through a ceiling, uh, be continuous, and uh, uh, again, be complete uh, all the way top to bottom. The most restrictive and the most demanding type of fire resistance rated wall is the firewall. Uh, in some cases, it's also known as a party wall or a separation uh, separation wall. This must be self-supporting for throughout all of the stories of the of the building, and it it must uh, uh, maintain its integrity during a fire-induced collapse on either side of the wall. Uh, so this is really a, a special, unique case of a fire resistance wall, and there's extra. Uh, design requirements in terms of the the collapse preve uh, collapse prevention and the uh, uh, self supporting stability of the wall um, in the code. The MBMA website uh, information and uh, address is given here, and this is a recap uh, summary in tabular form of all of the MBMA sponsored assemblies. Since we're uh, covering walls, which is this whole bottom section here, um, we'll be uh, uh, discussing those and highlighting those assemblies. And if you need the actual listing, you can either go directly to the UL online uh, database and, and find these assemblies, or even easier, go to the MBMA uh, online page and click on uh, one of these uh, orange highlighted assemblies. So let's go there. We'll go to the MBMA uh, web page and we'll scroll down a little bit and see this uh, entire summary table again of all of the assemblies. Uh, for our purposes of this part four, we'll just zero in on one of these assemblies and let's just pick the first one, the load bearing wall U425, we're interested in seeing that full assembly listing that goes up to two hours, gypsum board protection. We just uh, uh, key on it. And here we go directly to the UL uh, online website and we can see and scroll down and see the actual uh, uh, up-to-date uh, listing including any of the changes that may have been made to this assembly. So here you can see the same sketches and then all of the text associated for all of the elements of that assembly. So you can do that for any of the other uh, UL uh, assemblies that are on this list. Uh, if you need to see the listing, it's uh, very easy. Here's a summary again in, uh, in another form, just highlighting the six um, UL assemblies that MBMA has sponsored over the years. Uh, the load-bearing walls, U425 and U489, and then non-load-bearing walls, and these are uh, your exterior, mainly your exterior walls, V421, W404, 413, and W447. Um, if you uh, listen to part two in terms of the uh, UL nomenclature, the uh, designations for these assemblies, U and V and W are all the alphabetical prefixes for walls, and then the 400 series uh, are, are gypsum board protection. Uh, so th these are all consistent uh, with that system. In part five, by the way, just as an introduction, we'll cover uh, the joints, the, the final part of this uh, series, uh, both uh, head of wall joints and wall continuity systems. So let's get on with fire resistance walls, these sticks that I mentioned. Uh, the very first one is U425. 
just a few minutes ago, we actually looked, uh, went through online to the actual listing uh, at the UL website, and here's just a quick image of that. This is a conventional, traditional metal stud uh, gypsum board wall uh, with insulation infill within the cavity. Uh, the the minimum size and spacing of the of the metal studs is is given in the listing itself. Here it's highlighted that it's 20 gauge studs, and uh, part of that is because this is a structural load bearing wall, so you need a, a, a heavier gauge as opposed to a non load bearing wall, and and this wall is good for uh, anywhere from one to two hours as given, and. Uh, this this particular design has been uh, has been around for quite a while. Now, an alternative, if you need uh, just an architectural a non load bearing wall, here's another option. Uh, this one was not sponsored by uh, by MBMA, and it's good for one up to four hours if if needed. Uh, the distinction is, and what's highlighted is that one only needs 25 gauge studs, so lighter studs because it's a non-structural wall. So if you don't need a load-bearing wall, um, one could always uh, optimize uh, and use the, the more efficient lighter gauge studs. Here's one of the newer uh, versions of an interior wall and this is W447. Um, and it's also available as uh, uh, up north for ULC as uh, uh, ULC U421, uh, good for one and two hours. And basically, this is an interior wall adaptation of one of our exterior wall designs. Uh, basically, it uses girts uh, with four four foot on center spacing as your as your framing rather than, than uh, just the C wall studs and uh, uh, this this is uh, recently been approved uh, by UL and it's uh, it's in the database here's an exterior wall uh, u489 this is one of the older systems that has been around for a while again it's good for one and, and two hours it also has, uh, it includes some details for a uh, column, how to include a column detail with a rated wall that may be useful in adapting to other systems. Here is another exterior wall assembly, uh, UL uh, V421. This has been also around for, for a number of years, one and, one and two hour ratings. It consists of uh, girts uh, as your primary framing, space 48 inches, four foot on centers, uh, metal, uh, metal panel on the outside with uh, gypsum board protection uh, both on the, on the outside and the interior side of the wall cavity. This, even though the sketches don't show uh, any protection to, to column details or, or girt to column connections, we must maintain the continuity of the wall uh, and the fire resistive continuity over these. Uh, so uh, be, uh, uh, just be wary of that, please. Here's another exterior wall of more recent vintage, uh, UL Design W404. This is one hour, um, and it's a derivative, if you will, of V421 uh, with several notable features. One was an attempt to um, go beyond the 48 inch on center girt spacing. This one allows up to 90 inch on center girt spacing. We also uh, have placed all of the gypsum board protection now on the interior to maintain a separation between the exterior and the interior trades during the construction of the wall. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, it's got uh, furring uh, for for attachment of the of the board on the inside. It's still got the metal panel on the outside, and then uh, a, a fiberglass protection on the outside. Now, in addition for W404, and this uh, was was triggered by the 
evolving energy codes and uh, green buildings, energy conservation uh, throughout the country. For higher insulation requirements, we needed to uh, provide for additional insulation in the assembly itself. We have done that with uh, allowable options for use of the uh, a foam board Dow uh, Thermax uh, product in particular. This product can be uh, used in one inch board increments up to four inches maximum uh, and it may be placed all on the outside near the exterior metal panel. It may be placed all on the inside adjacent to the, the furring channels or it may be a little bit of both, uh, a little bit on the outside or the inside, depending on how uh, one wants to do this. Or if not needed, it's not required. So you don't have to use the Thermax if, uh, if it's not, uh, not necessary for your uh, local code and, uh, and energy requirements. The two-hour uh, cousin of this wall, uh, again, it's of more recent vintage, is W413. Uh, so this just increases uh, the rating and goes up to two hours. Both of these systems, by the way, are rated for both sides, for exposure from both sides. Uh, remember I noted before that some, some of the systems are rated only from the outside or only from the inside. Our system uh, was, uh, and all of these systems that we've discussed, the V and the Ws, were all rated from, from both sides, so there's, there's no chance of confusion. What we've done with, with this one to increase the two-hour rating, there's additional um, mineral wool infill within the cavity itself, four inches, and there's also an extra layer of board uh, on the interior. So instead of two layers that's required for, for the one hour, there's now three layers of board on the inside as you um, as highlighted with the, the bulleted uh, or the ballooned item number five on the cross-section sketch. So that's now three layers of board, gypsum board, type X on the inside. Uh, mineral wool insulation as well as fiberglass, and then your gypsum panel, or sorry, your metal panel on on the outside. Uh, similar to the uh, uh, to the one hour assembly, we also have the same options for the, the Dow Thermax uh, foam board. Uh, again, if you need the extra energy insulation, that's uh, the same allowable requirements on either side of the wall, up to four inches thick. Thick uh, max. And that concludes part four of this series. Thank you for your attention.